This is Democracy and Z, a student podcast brought to you by Cincinnati Public Radio in collaboration with Elements. For more, find us at democracyandme.org. Hi, this is Sierra Breton, and I am a senior at UC studying journalism, and I have also previously interned with Democracy and Me. Back in December, I had the opportunity to visit the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center with some other Democracy and Me students, plus a few members of Cincinnati Public Radio staff. The Freedom Center is an education center and a museum of conscience here in downtown Cincinnati, which opened back in 2004. The museum provides content and exhibits in which promotes freedom for all while uncovering the truths on slavery in the U.S. Together, we toured the permanent exhibits from slavery to freedom with stories and artifacts from colonial times to emancipation, the slave pen, a reconstructed cabin from pre-abolition Kentucky, and invisible slavery today, which uncovers human trafficking around the world in our own times. We also viewed a special exhibition called Designing Justice featuring the striking posters of artist activist Luba Lukova, which is on display through March 22nd. We learned about the incredible narrative quilts by Amina Brenda Lynn called Journeys 1 and 2, which takes up an entire wall of the museum. In this episode of Democracy and Z, we invite you to walk through the galleries with us, explore the displays, and listen in on some of our reflections. In addition to myself, you'll hear the voices of students Tasneem Saad, Enoch Sadiki, Nezret Dagal, Michelle Miao, Emma Fieldmeyer, Leo Ingram, WVXU reporter Corey Sharper, Cincinnati Public Radio Events Coordinator Katie Query, and Democracy and Z producer Julie Copens. all over them and it just shows how we're still mentally enslaved as black people from back like from slavery because to this day we still think when a child does something wrong we're so quick to use a belt to hit them because back then we were so used to getting hit and whipped around by the slave masters and yeah we're just still mentally a slave from back then absolutely and in a sense we still suffer this trauma and it's up to our generation to like kind of break that trauma. What do you what do you guys think about this picture? What do you see and what do you think? Honestly, it kind of reminds me of what just recently happened with um, the Haitians trying to come over here. Oh, yeah. them walking through the water. It look, looks so oh, yeah. different than that. Yeah, it does. Just shows that we're still mentally enslaved. Oh. Can you imagine like coming to a whole different like? continent and not speaking the language, having your own culture, having your own language and religion, and having to pretty much assimilate to, to, that. to the dominant. Uh, and, but like, think about today, like, black people, they believe in Jesus, and that was not our original religion. And we still pray to, like, a white Jesus, and it just shows that even today, we're still slaves. Right, because we're still finding ways to assimilate into the culture where that heads for code switching comes in and mm-hmm. when we have to change a language to speak like to speak so we can be presentable. What is that even? Like this why is that? It's showing like the lighter of things. Like I'm sure there's like way more graphic like and then as a student still in high school, this is definitely not taught in us in school books. Absolutely. Never seen Never. it. Never <laughs> and this, it's just it's like they made slavery such as like a mistake that could be forgiven and just sent over but like this just shows that it wasn't that simple at it's, all. look at this picture exactly those are not shown in the books um yeah can you imagine being a mother having a baby and having your baby stolen exactly. and just giving away mm-hmm. oh my god do you know that right underneath here is a part of like the underground area they were slaves over in Kentucky and they would have to come over to Cincinnati are mm-hmm. over here and they were considered free. Yeah, we were. I think in, in class right now, we're reading the um, read Uncle Tom's Cabin. And I think the book kind of shed light on the people who had to escape from the, from the south. Are there any thoughts 
on these pictures and stuff that you feel like you would like to share? Um, I really feel like this area is especially powerful because of like the shift in lighting and like the blue on top. I think it represents like the ocean and the middle passage and this, this exhibit specifically really does speak to me. Very uh, I Thank think you. that all of this is really important to remember and it kind of shows how American freedom, there's a lot of contradictions um, that um, that we can see throughout history since the founders stressed the importance of freedom, yet we ask now freedom for whom since many, the majority of the population was not free. So as an African American, um, seeing all these pictures, is there anything that you feel like it's still happening today but we're not addressing because of slavery? For sure. I feel like we kind of tend to ignore some of the significance of what we're seeing here and how significant it was to people who are African-American and who, whose ancestors had to struggle through all of these tragic, like this entire tragic 400 years almost. And I think this is something that really opens our eyes to what we are not really looking at all the time. Had like a, we had like a moment over there with the slaves being tied up. We talked about how being whooped to this day is still like an emotion, like a generation trauma from slavery that no one talks about. And yeah. I think um, you often see about like the music, like Negro spirituals, uh -huh. as they will call it. Like it's kind of like a bit of like their African culture, their um, religion. Because I knew. I read that back in the fields, they had no idea how to talk. They would always like sing songs mm -hmm. and like all braids or like some kind of way we used to communicate. Yeah, and they also had like codes with like some of their songs. Oh, it's just so powerful. I know a lot of people try to compare slavery to the Holocaust. I know. And say slavery wasn't that bad, but like a lot of people don't know what the slaves went through. Do you think you should be shielded in school, like stuff like this? Absolutely. Like, I think that's like kind of like along the lines of like critical race theory of like teaching the history, but like also like some students feeling like they're um, fit to be the blame. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Like if you censor the past, mm -hmm. it's only ensuring that it's going to become our present. Absolutely. Things shouldn't be censored. Any emotions right now that you would like to express? Do you think you've learned something new? Or how can you connect that to today? It's a lot to take in. Is that all? Yeah. It is a lot. about slavery and all that stuff but we've seen some Native Americans being mm. shown brought up and you know like we don't have a lot of like stories about them and histories about them and what do you have to say about that and do you think like, just, what's your well I, I mean I mean slavery is an insanely complicated subject I mean you know even for like a great exhibit like this trying to shove all the material into one place is, is still a very tall task mm -hmm. I mean like one of the exhibits um I saw it. That, um, it was it was very brief, but very eye opening too. Like how um, some of the slaves that are brought over from Africa um, were Muslims, and that's something that you know I never I've never really heard of, talked about. Mm -hmm. And then I guess bridging that to the um, Native Americans brought up into um, to, to the discussion is interesting. Kind of how the the narrative of people coming over. And rolling with an iron fist, I think, is only shown more when you read about the selections from from the Native Americans, along with um, the passages of slavery that are being discussed. I think it was definitely interesting to see that because I wasn't really expecting it, but I feel like there was a lot of the same sentiment. I feel like a lot of the white people, as they did with slaves, thought that they were better than the Native Americans and that to try and make them conform to the way that they were living was better. So I think that there are definitely a lot of the same parallels. And it's like the same story of just why people thinking that they're superior. So yeah, that was really interesting for me. So is there anything new you learned going through the exhibit? Or is it something that you like, is that something you're hoping to find? Yeah. Um, 
I think it was just really eye-opening seeing how slavery wasn't just in America, like the United States issue, that it was really happening all over the Americas. And um, so I learned a lot about that, and I thought that was really interesting because that's a subject that's not often taught in high schools and in colleges a lot as well. So, um, yeah, so I really learned just more of the... Um, I guess the the depth of, of how um, widespread it was. I pick one painting and tell us what it says to you. You see a gun and then a mic and then a gun. It's called the Chicago Blues. What does this say? Well, I think this shows more story. I think it's all about, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. Mm. I would think it's talking about how black boys these days who pursue music always thinking they're going to become gangsters and all that stuff. Mm. As you can see, music is not, it says, a print from music is not violence. And a lot of, like, a lot of black men these days when they make raps, it's always about, like, you know, shooting and killing all that stuff, which creates more They either get famous and then go right, to the gangs. Which kind of creates on to the stereotype that yeah. black people are very violent or thugs. Mm -hmm. Blues came from like black people, obviously, mm -hmm. and rap was kind of like a form of blues in a sense. Um, it was wasn't meant to be like as violent as it is today, and it had a lot of different meaning back in the day. And they would rap about like their struggles and um, just life as a black person. Is there mm -hmm. any painting or any picture that speaks to you or you can create in a way? Yeah, well, I. The one on censorship with the man playing the flute and his fingers are nailed to the flute, that one just kind of made me gasp. I just thought it was such a powerful depiction of that idea of censorship that, um, how it hurts, you know, when you can't express yourself. Have you ever had that experience where you yeah. wanted to say something but you felt your mouth was nailed shut right. somehow? Yeah. We're just kind of talking about like, in order for like our future to be better, we think that women should like start taking more lead and taking Thank charge. You. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, just talking about how this is a world run by men, and how this has produced a lot of problems. So we were talking specifically about um, the threat currently to Roe versus Wade, mm -hmm. and how women should have more say because it's our bodies, and you know, men they don't understand this type of stuff because they haven't gone through it. So how are we? Yeah. Sorry. How are we being controlled by people who don't give birth? Yeah, exactly. We yeah, literally exactly. birth and we raise these men only to be controlled by them. Yeah. And not to be like again anti-man, but like in reality there's so much more that we have experienced than a man and they wouldn't even be able to even compare to the pain that we go through as giving birth. It just shows that the world should have been led by a woman. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. We're like moving backwards almost right now because I feel like we used to have, you know, like Roe was there for so many decades and now we're moving backwards and I feel like women especially when we're talking about like modern slavery I feel like they have a lot to worry about with like sex trafficking and with different mm -hmm. types of exploitation I just feel like it's an area that we should definitely focus on more and talk more about. I literally I keep bringing it back to like the Native Americans I literally just watched this Native American man um talk about like um back in the day they women ruled like, the women were in control. Um, I dated a guy from the Philippines, and he said the same thing. Like, the women take control of, like, the, the like, tribe, the whatever. But, like, he said our women walked around topless. We didn't, like, sexually assault them. We didn't see anything about that. Like, that was our women. Like, that, we were so used to it. It just, like, him saying that was just kind of, like, eye-opening. Like, how just, like men are today and how we have to cover up and they blame women for being raped and saying like it was because of the way you dressed. Exactly. Yeah. As a person that immigrated here, what does this painting say to you? Good question. Uh, reading the little description, it does say a person who has changed his, his or her roots but continues to grow in a new place. And I think this talks about how like Africans when we're parents, when we tend to move to somewhere we don't know, we change our name or the way we talk in certain accents and we forget our, you know, our native ways of how we, used, how we were raised back in Africa and we completely forget where we come from because we're assimilating into the whiteness culture here. And someone who's an immigrant who tries to, you know, 
connect to her homeland time to time by going home and speaking the same language or celebrating holidays no one can understand. I think that's what it says to me. Trying, but that's what, I don't know, that's how I beat that. After our time at the Freedom Center, we took the streetcar to Taglo's and over the Rhine and had some pizza because after walking through all that history, you need some carbs, right? We talked about what we saw at the museum, but also what we didn't see. For instance, a lot of us were looking for more content about what the slaves really went through, more in-depth details that many Americans are ignorant to or don't want to talk about. Our more details on the relationships between the slaves and the Native Americans, and perhaps more details on what life was like for the Natives during slavery. On future visits, it will be interesting to see how the Freedom Center exhibits evolve in response to our changing times and growing awareness of these connecting threads from the past to the present. Martin Luther King Day and Black History Month are important opportunities for us to learn about Black history, from the chains of slavery to the powerful movement and marches that took place, and the culture that has influenced many parts of the world. This year, I want to challenge you to broaden your horizon. Go somewhere you've never been. Find a new Black artist or author to discover, or choose a Black or Indigenous community or cause to support. Thanks to the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center for welcoming us and for being such a vital community resource here in Cincinnati. We'll be back soon. If you're a high school student who's passionate about history and justice, you should check out their Teen Docent program. Applications are now open for the 2022-2023 program, and you can learn all about it at the museum's website, freedomcenter.org. Until next time, for Democracy and Z, I'm Sierra Britton. Democracy and Z is a program of Cincinnati Public Radio and WVXU with support from the Charles H. Dater Foundation. Thanks for listening up.